19.9 We can make our plans, but God determines our steps. First time putting on the prosthetic, it felt scary because I didn't know if I was gonna feel pain, if my stump was like fully healed. Once I took that first few steps, it clicked where I remembered what I used to do a couple months ago. Wow, this is really a thing. This is really like my new life. My name is Derek Loxident. I'm from Oklahoma City, and I'm a future Paralympian. I was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. At the time, there was a lot of moving pieces, issues with my mom and dad. Us moving out from my dad's roof stirred up a lot of problems. At the time, my mom was working a night shift at a security job, and it forced me and my sister to, to sleep at the back of her car because she couldn't afford a babysitter. Within the two years of moving to Oklahoma, my dad had passed in jail. I remember receiving a phone call a few days before his passing, father and son communicating, talking. There wasn't a lot of emotional feeling within that. Back then, I was a high-energy kid, running around the house, screaming and yelling. My mom said, I need to put this boy in sports. a home game against Nebraska Kearney. We ended up losing that game and I went out with a few friends. I had a few drinks and as the night started to wind down, I had went to the bathroom and I remember coming back out. The lights were on and everybody was exiting and stuff and you know I had lost track of my group of friends and didn't have a phone. I walk out and didn't see anybody. I see a gas station on the other side of the train I might as well go over there and see if I can get a phone call. Instead of going around towards the front of the train, I went in between the cargoes. As I'm in between the train, I end up starting on me. I try to hop from in between them and I end up tripping and hitting my head on the gravel and I just passed out. I woke up and looked down and I picked my leg up and it's like my foot's gone. And at that point, just I just wanted to die. Hello? Stand by. You're going to be okay. I have an ambulance on the way. Can you tell me exactly what happened? He says that he was, got hit or it got taken off by the train. Took what off? His foot. Oh. Left foot. Try to hurry because it's bad. I wake up in the hospital and the first people I see is my mom and my aunt. first words that I had said to her in the hospital was that I was sorry. My mom told me that I'm going to be able to bounce back from this. Like this, this is not what's determined like my life and who I am as a person. Come back from this and, you know, make something great of myself. My 
my defensive back coach showed me a video when I was in the hospital of this amputee girl that was in gymnastics. One thing I noticed in that video was just like her joy in what she was doing and not caring what other girls were thinking. If she's able to do something like that, that's like no excuse of what I can do within this world of being an amputee. There was a lot of days where I would show up to class where I would just have either sweatpants or jeans on just because I didn't want people staring at me or looking at me. Steps down and go. Let me drive. In and out. In and out. Use that glute. Drive, drive, drive. Come on, quick. There's days I just didn't feel like getting up because of phantom pain and like felt just off. Days got easier as, as I continued to keep showing up. I just kept showing up. Being around the team, that's what really helped me a lot because they didn't really view the amputee side of me. They viewed me as Derek, the football player, the Derek, the teammate. Let's go, be love! My faith has grown a lot throughout the last four years. I feel like I've taken the right steps, the man that I'm, I'm wanting to become, and I'm not really too worried about how big of the steps or how small, as long as they're the right steps in the right direction that I'm wanting to go. Paralympia athletes, they're just normal people, they just have different disabilities. Their challenges within day-to-day -day basis and you know what they have to deal with. Beatrice, who's a single leg amputee, same as myself. Miguel, who is a wheelchair racer. There's Nick Mayhew with civil palsy. David Brown, a blind 200 and 100 meter runner with his guide, Javon. There's different things that we're going through, but able to grow in learning that and getting a feel for, you know, how to help out when, when help is needed with, with each other. Athletes train for four, five years for one race, for one jump. That's beautiful. No one can take that away from you. Getting into the blocks, it's a really quiet stage. I'm not really thinking about too much or thinking about the lane beside me. I'm trying to ease everything that is going on in my mind, slowing down my breathing, trying to focus on my sets. Set. And have a good reaction to the gun. practice to not make mistakes, but of course there's going to be mistakes that you come across. Football, a defensive lineman could have a busted play where he goes into the wrong gap, but you have two other levels that are there to back you up within the defense. With track, it's just, it's just really all on you, on going out and executing what you need to do. If I have a missed strike on the board within my long jump, that's something on your end. That's something that you have to live with. Fast two, soon, stay tall. Oh. 
Derek, you're too fast too soon. You're not giving me big, powerful pushes in the beginning. You're just balls to the wall from the very beginning. You gotta push and develop. Push, 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 push. You just went bop, 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 bop. Okay? You gotta push. That's why you're still short. If you don't push, you're not gonna get there. Be patient, develop the approach. I handle failure with a grain of salt. It's something that comes often if you're an athlete. It's something that you have to go through to become better. The nerves are there, but it's like, I'm not letting it get to me. I've been in this type of situation before, so do what you do best is that's being an athlete. Perform at a high level. Get to the back of the sand pit. PB. I was on the phone with my mom. I was just happy to see her and seeing that joyful smile. She's done so much, so much in my life. Me and my sister as a single mother, raising both of us and, you know, making sacrifices day in, day out. <laughs> it's something that might not be too big to others, but it's big to me. I'll call you back. All right. This year is a big year, a big stepping stone for me. Getting on the national team and being able to represent the USA Paralympic team and, and in the country as well. Never really thought about not making it. I don't think any athlete would have that thought in their head if they're a competitor. I felt like I was rock bottom after my accident. I felt like my world was just coming to an end. We only have one life and not too many opportunities are presented in that lifetime, so why waste the talent that's been given to me? <laughs> There's a little kid that started playing football because of me. His name's Elijah. I ended up meeting him at my first race in Edmond at the Denver Games. Seeing him see a version of himself in me of, of something that he wants to become or be like. That's when I first felt like I was able to to have an opportunity to aspire and to help others in growing in themselves. I really just want to be myself in this world and I want to be looked at as someone that took adversity head on and even though it may have looked ugly at times, it's something that you know, I was still able to pull through and it was able to stand victorious at the end. I want to be a person that never let the obstacles stacked against them determine them. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. Hi, I'm Derek, and I'm here to solve a Rubik's Cube in the two minutes. <laughs> go! Let's go, Derek. Okay. Strategy. Strategy. What you know, is it? It's, it's just really just flipping stuff, bro. You flipping just, stuff. You just figure it out as you go. You know? 
I would not be confident if you were trying to flip houses. Oh my god. But maybe we can flip You don't think Rubik's flipping houses would be my thing? Nah. No? What's your taste like? Are you like a beige decor kind of guy? Uh, Are you like an Ikea boy? Ikea, yeah. I know nah, about those. We know him. He's all about that white I know man. about those, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you um, know about the Swedish meatballs, we know. Yes, I know. Yeah. How'd you know? It's <laughs> weird. Oh, how do I know that? I don't know. Maybe because it's my job to that work with That is true. Food, I maybe? forgot. I forgot. All right. How are we feeling? Uh, I feel good. Feel good? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Are you really sure? Yeah. Getting closer. I mean, am I? I don't I think know. I am. I don't know. I'm just flipping stuff. Just too. flipping stuff? Yeah. How's that okay. brain One doing? One minute mark. One minute mark. How's that brain doing after competing today? Just cool. Cool yeah. 100, cool followed 100. by a standard in the long jump. Yeah. Should we uh, also let Marcus Rem know you're coming for him? Oh. After, after. After, after. 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 We'll keep that one under, under lock, eh? Yeah. All right. Yeah. What's our time here, Kay? 124. Ooh. Oh my gosh. 124? Yeah, you got this. It's like I mixed it up real good for you. You huh? did. <laughs> Can he perform under pressure, folks? This is where we find out. Just one, 15 seconds one tile left. to go. Let's go, D Lock. Let's get cool. Hey. Wait, what was it? Hmm? Huh? Who's your man? Oh, yeah. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that.